Welcome to the Refuge House Church channel. Every week we bring you world-based inspiration and advice to help you grow spiritually. Today, Pastor Roland will share insights from God's word and speak on the Entering the Rest of His Grace Sermon series. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into the word with us. Father, we declare that whatever is sieged against us, whatever is incensed against us, whatever gang up in the spirit or in the natural against us, we give your verdict, they shall be as nothing. Even when we seek them, we will not find them because we don't find nothing. Today, exalt your name. Exalt your name. Glorify yourself. Let your word be spirit and life to each and every one here. Let our minds be renewed. And let Jesus be revealed and glorified. And everybody shout a living amen from the depth of your heart. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go to like three people with a smile. Say you are entering your rest. Please do it with a good smile. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. You are welcome. Please kindly sit down. You're welcome. Amen and amen. Is everybody here? Welcome to our first service. Say, say, say with me, say, my soul. Rest down in the Lord. Say, 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 my soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and what? My, say, say, my soul. Don't be cast down. Rest in the Lord. Come on, say that. Same, and I'm talking, some of you are not saying it too. Media people, make sure you are part of the word. Though. Say, my soul, my, soul, my, mind, my mind, my will, my, will, my, emotion, my emotion, calm down. Rest, say, calm down. Rest in the Lord. Say, no tension. Say, Jesus is on the throne. Say, my soul, rest thou in the Lord. Rest thou in the Lord. Rest thou in the Lord. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Say no pressure. No pressure. Say that. Say no pressure. no pressure. The first pressure point is how you talk. The next pressure point is how you think. People are pressured not because of what is going around them. People are pressured because of the way they talk and the way they think. Jesus said, I will liken any man who hears my word and doeth them. Is that not so? As a man who built his house where? On the rock. Guess what? The rain came. The wind came. And beat on the house. So the fact that you are standing on the wall doesn't mean the rain will not beat you. The storm will not attempt to shake you. The Christian life is not a life that is devoid of storm, but we can triumph in the midst of storm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because in this world, there will be a lot of tribulation. But as long as your mind is on Christ and your confession is on Christ, at the end of the day, the storm will only end up assisting you to get to your destination. It is only in God the thing that is against us works for us. I hope you know that. For we know, so you need to know, that all things... So anything that is trying to pull you down, if you can just put your mind like a catapult set on Christ, whatever is trying to pull you down will end up assisting you to get to where you want to go. At one point, Goliath was a threat. When David decided to confront Goliath, in the natural, it looked that was the end of David. But David's eyes was on the Lord. His mind was on God. He said, Goliath, you come against me with your military experience with your sword and your shield and your intimidating high. Say, but you're making one mistake. I am not coming against you on me. I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the one you have insulted and you have disregarded. And by him, I will bring you down. And I will cut. That was where David won the war. You didn't hear what I said. 
Tell your neighbor you win the war by how you talk. So even when you feel pressed, talk life. Can I tell you this? Nothing on the outside can bring you down if your mouth stays up. Bible says that keep it his mouth, keep it his soul from trouble. In the book of Proverbs. When you refuse to talk down, you always be up. When men say there is a casting down, what do you say? What did the Bible say? It shall be well with who? What did he say? Let the weak say. My head, oh. Eh? Fuel has gone up, oh. Everything is upside down, oh. Do you know why everything is upside down? Because that's how you are talking. And the way you talk will program the way you think. One of the most incredible gifts that God has given to you and I is our mouth. Use it well. Your mouth is not just to chop. <laughs> it's not just to eat food and swallow a bar. Your mouth is not just to gossip. Try to stop gossip. Your mouth is not just to communicate. Your mouth is to live. Tell your neighbor, so living begins with how you talk. It does not matter how impossible and hopeless any situation is around anybody. If he refuses to talk down on himself, he will rise up. What is killing people faster than anything is how they speak. First Peter 4 says, He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his lips that they speak no guy. I was meditating on something this morning and it dawned on me. The Bible says in Revelations 1 6 that you are now been made kings and priests unto God. Is that not so? Say that with me. Say, I am a king. Do you know why you are a king? Because you are in Christ. We are a royal priesthood. Royal means kingly. So, as a king, you are supposed to carry yourself, conduct yourself, walk, speak, act like a king. God, that's who you are. Now, the Bible gives us a revelation about what follows a king. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, where the word of a king is, there is what? And Samina. Can you say it louder? Because if you're going to change, the way you talk will change. Jesus said, by your words, you are condemned. By your words, you are what? Justified. So, what is condemning you is not what's happening out there. What is condemning you is not what you're hearing on the news. What is condemning you, it's not how tough things are. What is condemning is what you are saying about them. Heaven will always take position with those who speak in accordance with the word. That's what Jesus said, if you deny me, I will deny you. What does it mean to deny? It means to speak in agreement with your circumstance. To speak in agreement with your situation. To speak in agreement with your condition. When you are conditioned mentality, when you have a conditional mentality, you will never flow in the grace of your position. Tell your neighbor, say be position minded. Your position is based on Christ and what he has done for you. So you, you cannot walk in your kingly authority if you are condition minded. You must think from your position in Christ where you are seated with him in the heavenly places. King sits and reign. Where the word of a king is, there is what? So that means there's power in your mouth. You know how a king walk or reign? By talking. If a king say, I want this road to be tarred. Is it the king that will go and carry a wheelbarrow? Or drive car? Or carry sand? All he needs to do is to do what? Say it. Then he has the authority and the well way to bring it to pass. The king has said it must be done. That's how your life is. The day you discover that the secret of your life is in how you speak, your life will change. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes, you checked your account. And what you saw was not encouraging. Now, what did you say? Did you say what you saw or did you say what you believe? Because what you saw is based on the senses. But what you believe is based on what God has said. You can continue to speak your frustration and continue to be frustrated and depressed. Or you can choose to speak your faith and walk in victory all the days of your life. There are forces in the spirit realm waiting for what you say. Because in the spirit realm, you have been certified in Christ and recognized as a king. They are waiting for your decrees. They are waiting for your order. The problem with many of us is that we are very inconsistent with what we say. 
The book of Isaiah says that Jerusalem and Judah has fallen because of what they say. Your life will fall or rise based on your mouth. The enemy is putting a lot of pressure. People don't get it. They think the pressure is because of what is happening. I was talking with someone who, when he finished, he blessed me. I, I didn't even know I was talking to him by the spirit. He called, he said, he said parole. He said that he was talking about the government and why things are not working, blah, 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 blah. And this guy is blessed too, very blessed. He's wealthy. And he was talking, so I kept quiet. He kept talking, talking then, and I said to him, I said, God never said you to be well with the world, though. I hope you know. I said, those who are looking for salvation in government, they are wasting their time. Because he said, darkness shall cover the earth. He, he kept quiet. And I said, gross darkness, the people. He said, but the glory shall arise on the few, and that's you and I. And I told him, I said, what is happening now? Is it different from what is happening in Egypt? I said, in Egypt, money failed. Our money itself is still almost, you never reached 2,000, shall it did somewhere. But during time of Egypt, there was no purchasing power. It was bad. Money failed completely. But, but one of the things you need to learn is that if money fails, God doesn't fail. If government fails, God does not fail. Where you, you are really hopeless, hopeless and doomed is when your faith is in government. Then when they fail, you know that you don't finish. So I said to him, I said, during the time of Egypt, it was so bad that the people exhausted every reserve and there was nothing to sell. So they came to Joseph, say, buy us. Just be feeding us. Anything you want to do with us, do. <laughs> I don't think it has got to that step. Is that also? Just looking at some of you, I think you are doing well. Look, see, see, some of you can't even smile. Some of you don't look like who is suffering. Look at charity. So blessed. Look at Ebenezer. Look at Papa. Eh? Look at Chinedu. Look at, ah, Samson, Samson. You know that side, yeah, you know that side we talked. That side, mommy told you. Just watch that side. They're looking very fresh. Tell your neighbor, say, my encouragement is in how I speak. Stop, stop, stop naming yourself by where you are. Name yourself by who you are. Do you understand what I said? I just said something now. Stop calling yourself by where you are. Start calling yourself by who you are. I will repeat it one more time. Stop calling yourself by where you are. Start calling yourself by who you are. That's who you are. So I said to him, I said, but guess what? That even in the midst of a famine and a crisis, God created the Goshen. You know what the Goshen is? That means whatever was going on around there, there was an atmosphere, a place, where it was as if nothing was going wrong. That was called Goshen. It was a portion of land where the blessings of God, now say, lift your hand like this, say with me. Say the blessings of God. The blessings of God that has been passed on to me. The blessing of Abraham that make it rich and added no sorrow that has been passed on to me in Christ Jesus is upon my life. It's speaking upon my life. No more sorrow. 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 In the name of Jesus. Listen, you are the seed of the blessed. Stop calling yourself by where you are. Start calling yourself by who you are. And the word of God says you are blessed. You didn't hear what I said. And as I started talking, he said, he said Pastor, you will not believe that this thing you are telling me was what me and my wife were discussing this morning. I said, God has raised people who look up to him to become like Joseph. And in the midst of famine, you will triumph. You are not broke because you don't have money. You are broke because you talk broke. Did you hear what I said? You know what is killing anything that has life around you? is your mouth. And once your mouth starts to stink, your mind will start to stink. Stinking thinking and stinking talking will produce stinking life. It's very simple. All the scripture, life and death is where? Life and death is where? The power of the tongue. What did Jesus say in Matthew 12, 36, 37? He said, by thy words, 
thou shalt be thou be what? By the words thou shalt be so let me ask you, is it the economy that is condemning you? Is, is it the economy that is putting pressure on you? What is putting pressure? Talk to me now, come on. What is putting pressure on you? Your ma you are talking from where you are instead of who you are. God spoke to a prophet one day, said by tomorrow, the bag of garage shall be sold for two naira. The bag of rice shall be sold for one naira. I'm just trying to use something you can relate to it. Because you don't know Sheke and Bushe. <laughs> <laughs> I know that King James language. Sheke, Bushek. One, me, one major. You do, you know, you do, when your metrics is school, they need to teach you Sheke and Bushek. Okay, so the one you can understand. The prophet said, hypothetically, all right, tomorrow Gadi shall be two naira. I hear a bag of rice is almost 70 something naira now. Somebody shout, praise God. It, it does not matter how the price of rice go, we will buy it. You will buy it. Do, do you know why you are talking like that? You are listen, listen. Let, let's get this revelation. We are not talking from what we have. We are talking from who we are, and who we are says, "My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus." If you don't want to eat rice again, they talk nonsense. No, no, no. Wow, well, rice don't turn something else. You know, go shop up. That's what me and mommy are, are disciplining ourselves to speak. Because the Holy Ghost, there, there was one time, I, it's a while ago, the, I wanted to almost, and then Holy Ghost like, excuse me, you want to say something? I, I said, hallelujah. Like, like, it's like, you won't talk, you get something to do. <laughs> hallelujah, glory to God. God, you are just so good. You are sweet, amen. So, I thought so. You won't talk. There are many of you who are in the midst of a miracle right now, but you are spoiling it with your mouth. You look at yourself in the physical, there's nobody. Do you know one scripture that, I don't know why I'm preaching like this, oh God. I've never even looked at my sermon. Um, in, in, in Isaiah 41 verse 10, the Lord says, fear not. Look at the neighbor and say, don't fear. I am with you. Why should we not fear? Because God is with us. Wait, let me break it. Yesterday I was meditating. Let me break it down for you. Now, if you are walking on a road and there is nobody with you and it's dark, <laughs> very dark, and as you are going, you now see four people coming. One was holding a gun. Another one is holding a cutlass. One is holding a hammer. And the last one is holding knife. Eh, what is <laughs> And they were walking to you. As they passed, they said, stop there. The only reason you will not fear is if you have something to overcome them. Otherwise, you better start praying. Now, to help you appreciate when God says, fear not, I am with you, let me travel you to Elisha's time. The king of Syria will plan to attack Israel. The moment he finished planning in his bedroom, Holy Ghost would tell Elisha, don't go here, the man don't set trap for now. Avoid it. Uh -uh. The thing was too accurate. So the king called all his trusted men and said, come, come, come. Can, you, can somebody tell me who is a spy here? Because I remember when we sat down, we were eight people here. Nobody knows this plan except eight people. How come when we are getting ready, the people know exactly what we wanted to do and they just avoid us? Can somebody tell me who is working for Israel before he finished, he said, oh, God, nobody they work for Israel here. There is one man, we know him, he says in Dotan, his name is Elisha. Anything you plan in your bedroom, God will tell him, eh? where is he? Says, spy, go on, let me go and collect him. So they tracked him down. He now sent army there. Then, a servant, they didn't give us his name, came out and saw where they stood, was surrounded with a Syrian host army. Now, if you were operating from where you are, you better, you fear. You better be scared because say your last prayer. Because these men, they didn't come to greet you. <laughs> they came to collect you. When the guy said, the guy said, alas, that's King James language. Let me break it down. We don't die. Master, we don't finish. The whole Syria, who told you it was the whole Syria? Who is guarding the town? Because fear will always exaggerate. Fear will always what? 
Yeah, it wants you to feel very small. It wants you to think like a grasshopper. It wants you to see everything as a giant. That's what fear does. And, and he said, alas, master, we are, we are finished. Oh. Do you know what Elisha said? And this is what I saw yesterday, which confirmed Isaiah 4110. Elisha said, hey, chill. They that are with us are more than they that be with them. Now, this is the part you didn't see. Why the guy was trying to figure, because he was seeing from where he was, he was speaking from where he was. When what you see and what you see, there's no hope. As you are staying in church, do you know what is going on at Egbelu Junction right now? Why? Because you are limited by this house. You can't see outside here. Everything you are, think, is defined by your space here. But in Christ, we see through Christ. So we can see beyond where we are. We can see in him. We are supposed to be seen from Christ, not where we are. So Elijah was seen from God. So he now said, Lord, open the eyes of this man. Let me rephrase it. So he can see what I see. Elijah was not speaking positive confession. He saw something. He was seeing something. So as the people came and Elijah looked, his eyes opened. And guess what he was seeing? He saw, watch this, chariots and horses of fire much greater than the Syrian army surrounding Elijah. Now, let me ask you a question. If you can see, God did not say, I am with you. That's a positive confession. You know? No, no, you have to see it. Too. Did you hear what I said? I said you have to see it. I'm not talking about seeing with your eyes. You must see it with your faith. You must see the extent to which God went through to now live inside of you as the greater one. You must see it. You must see that when Jesus died on the cross, he died so that man and God will become one. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's not just positive thinking and wishful thinking. You need to know that Jesus went to the cross to die so God can live inside you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He went to hell, suffered for you and me, was bruised for us. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Jesus suffered so you and I can live. So you and I can be rich. He became sin so you and I can become his righteousness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, when you see revelation, light comes. God will give you. So Elijah saw chariot. God opened his eyes. So when Gazi was freaking out, <laughs> he said, oh, chill. He said, they that are with us are more. So the guy, because he was limited by where he was, ah, okay, what, 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 what. So, okay, don't worry. Hold it. Open his eyes. As his eyes opened, can you imagine what happened? The guy was just, did, see, what would dispel threat is when what is bigger than threat is there. Do you understand what I mean? When, when something won't fight you, then what a big person show? What it go happen? Eh? What it go happen? <laughs> when something they both say will finish you, there's something when a big person can't show up. What it go happen? You go, there's no best. Okay, sorry, no best. You can, before you, the thing came, the, the guy was threatening you, I will finish you, I will end you. Then someone bigger than him showed up. I remember when we had a, an issue years ago, we brought a young man to come and fix some things in the house in Sapling when we went some years far back. And he saw everybody came with their cars and everything. So he had, became covetous. He came to meet me, said, if we could borrow him money. I said, borrow him money. But my mother said, ask who? Why will I borrow him money? He came to work in our house till 8 o'clock. And the part back of the house, they usually lock. They opened it for him to walk. He was there till 8 and nobody remembered to lock it. So he went and organized with boys to want to come and rob us. So they came the next morning. The robbery didn't go well because somewhere along the line, one of my sisters made a call to my dad. And who came? And they came to our room then and shouted. They quickly ran away. We picked him, arrested him, took him to um, the police station. Why they were trying to bribe the police station in the town, we relocated the matter to Bini, Zone 6. When we got there, my brother took me there. I'm, I'm saying this for an illustrative purpose. The inspectors we met there, God bless our police in Jesus' name. 
Say they should bring money. This I was looking at them. I said, money for what? For In my mind, I'm like, I don't get money for what? They were all talking, talking. Okay, we should bring 60,000. We'll get them 60,000. Okay, they will do this. They were speaking English. As they were talking, tell them, say, connect to headquarters. If anything is trying to intimidate you, tell your neighbor, say, hook up to headquarters. I just started praying in the spirit. You know, and when you're praying in the old clothes, what you're doing, you are refusing to operate from where you are. You are refusing to operate from what you see. When your account is becoming a Jebusite and, and Giga site, Amorite, Hittite, Hittite, all you do, pull off and operate from where you are. And I started praying in the Holy Spirit. The spirit of God just put a weakness in my heart. Say, go and see the AIG. That's the assistant inspector. That's the entire zone. He was in charge of like six states. It's big. I've never been to his office before. He said, go and see him. So I told my brother, he said, where are you going? I said, just stay there. I'm coming. I went up, walked upstairs. As I entered the reception, it was a very big one. And it was a senior police officer that was there. As I was sitting in the reception there, I sat down. Just Holy Ghost, all right? Those people said, go and pay for it. Tell her you want to buy a lunch. I just came. I said, madam, how are you? You're looking so nice. I said, what do you want to this afternoon? He looked at me like this. I said, I'm going to pay for it. Ha, huh? I said, thank you. I gave her. So I went to see I said, okay, what do you want? I said, I want to see your guy. I said, relax, wait. He didn't tell me what for. He just said, wait. As one was, okay, stop. I said, come. Oh, yeah, go see him. He did it. So I came in. I said, good morning, sir. How are you? He said, I said, my name is Pastor Roland. It's okay. I said, I have a gift for you. There was a book, one of the books I wrote. I gave it to him. I said, can I pray for you? So he removed his cap. And I prayed. When I finished praying, he said, said, what do you want? And I told him the case, everything. He said, come. He wrote on a piece of paper, signed his signature, and put his number. He said, any police officer in the case, tell them to bring the file and show them this. I said, thank you. God bless you. I left. I came down. As I went back to see my brother, I said, hey, hey, you don't come back. And I showed them this. As soon as I showed, they did like this. Okay, oh, sir. Till we left there, nobody collected five kobo from our hand again. Anytime they come, Augusta, we, we, we are doing that. Augusta, well, I say, look, if my mind is doing that, look at you. Tell your neighbor, say, stop operating, from where you, stop operating from where you are. You want to enter the rest of grace? Tell your neighbor, say, stop operating from where you are. You are not saying it like I like it. Tell your neighbor, you want to operate from where? Stop operating from where you are. Come on, say, stop operating for where you are. Start laboring in rest. Tell the number, say, connect to headquarters. Listen, headquarters is inside you. That's God. If anything, listen to me. If anything anywhere is trying to intimidate you, laugh. What did I say? Say, the Lord will laugh. Laugh, then connect to headquarters. Because he said, fear not. I am with you. For God to be with you simply means his power is backing you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? His presence is backing you. Anything that wants to intimidate you will have to beat God first before he can touch you. You know the reason why you are scared? is because you forget that he's there. Can I ask you a question? Even in your rational thinking, do you, can you ever conceive anything beating God? Can you? Do, do you think anything can defeat God? Forget about you first. Forget about you. Do you think anything can defeat God? Do you think anything you are dealing with is bigger than God? Do you think anything that is confronting you can overthrow God? Answer me now. No. Do you believe that? No. Now, if you know he can overthrow God, why do you think he can overthrow you? When God lives inside you. It's time for you to be serious. Hallelujah. It's time for you to be what? Say, I choose to enter the labor of rest. Let me introduce what I want to say, then I'll stop. Everybody say, I choose to enter the labor of rest. Last Wednesday, please try to listen to the message. I said, God did not create man to struggle. God didn't create us to be defeated. God didn't create us to be harassed. No, that's not your destiny. God created you to dominate. Say amen. Say, I was created to dominate. To dominate means to live from who you are in God, not from where you are.
to live from who you are in God, to take charge. And we said that for us to dominate, we have to walk. The purpose of walk is to demonstrate or to express dominion. The purpose of walk is not to hustle, to struggle. The purpose of walk is to do what? To express dominion. That's why God said we should walk. Because if you're going to dominate, you have to walk to dominate. But the kind of walk that God wants us to walk, it's not the one that will produce stress. Because if you remember, after Adam sinned, the walk mentality of man was now rooted in sweat. Is that not so? Let me show you. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Go to Genesis chapter 3, everybody. Hallelujah. Is somebody learning something this morning? Say, I choose to rest. Say that. Say, I choose to rest. I think it's in Genesis chapter 3, everybody. Genesis 3. Can you put it on the screen? Genesis chapter 3. Glory be to God. I think Genesis 3. Glory. I said glory. Genesis 3. I think you should be able to know that part verse now. I think it should be after 15. Go to verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. From 15 downwards, I am sure. I want to show you what happened to where hustling came from. Hallelujah. Okay, I think um, from verse 13. Let's go from verse 13. It says, And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that you've done. And the woman said the serpent what? Beguiled me. The word beguiled me, the serpent deceived me. That's Satan's job. He's a liar. What did I say? So anything the devil tells you is a lie. Do you understand that? The situation that you're going through is trying to convince you that his lie is true. So don't believe it. Anything Satan is attacking you with is a lie. And he's trying to use the situation to convince you that it's true. It's a lie. He said the serpent deceived me. It not dawned on Eve that she had been deceived. And I did it. Go to verse 14, everybody. And the Lord said unto ser on the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed. So tell your neighbor, say the devil is cursed. Yeah. You are cursed above all cattle, though he was using the uh, instrument that I used. Above every beast of the field, upon the belly that shall go, and thus shall that eat all the days of your life. Go to the next verse. Then he said, and I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. And what did he say? This was where the birth of Christ was prophesied. Because women don't carry seed, it's men that carry seed. But the seed of man at this point in time has been contaminated by sin. So it wasn't possible for a savior to become born by man. Because if the savior is born, he will be sinful like man. So God here prophesied divine insemination. That means the seed that will produce the Savior will come directly from God and will be supernaturally planted in the woman. All right? Are you there? Are you following me? And between thy seed and thy seed, and it shall bruise what? What will it bruise? Everybody say it. What will it bruise? It shall bruise your head. And thou shalt bruise his seed, prophesying the victory that Jesus will have over the Sabbath. Go to the next verse. And upon the woman, this is as a result of the seed. Upon the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in sorrow. So women were not meant to be delivering with pain. That was not God's plan. All right? He said, thou shalt bring forth children. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children. And your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. Go to the next verse. And he said unto Adam, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat, Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall that eat of it all the days of your life. That means you're going to walk in sorrow. Now, go to the next verse. He said, thorns also and thistle. Paraphrase. Shuku shuku. Hello? Everybody say shuku shuku. That thing when it is shook. 
go to sight, go to shook, go to pain. Stress. Another word for thoughts and tissue is stress. Struggle. Everybody say struggle. In other words, in struggle shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Go to verse 19. He said, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. That's stress. Everybody say stress. All right? Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. Talking about his body. But go to, uh, 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 sorry, um, Genesis chapter 8. Go to Genesis chapter 8. Look at verse, um, I think from verse 19. Genesis chapter 8 from verse 19. Genesis chapter 8 and from verse 19. Are we there? Um, start from that part that he said, I will no longer curse the earth, the ground again. Huh? Beautiful. Very good. Are you following the flow? Can we read it together? And the Lord smelled, after I offered an offering, a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. So say with me, say there's no curse on the ground anymore. Have you heard people say this land is cursed? No. God says, I've lifted it. There's no curse on the ground anymore. At this point, the curse was operating in the way people thought and the way people spoke. So if the ground looked like it was cursed, it's because of people with cursed thinking and cursed speaking that was operating in the land. Are you following what I'm saying? Hello. As long as you think there's something very powerful outside that can stop you from becoming what God wants you to be, you are thinking like a cursed person, even though you are blessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Did you see where God says, I will not curse the ground anymore? It, did you see? Look at everybody. Can you see it? And because some of you will see what the Bible says and you're going to say something else. Curse anymore for man's sake. For what? The imagination. What is the imagination? The way the mind works. The imagination of man's heart or mind is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. That means I'm not all those who is waiting for apocalypse. You know, go see. You know, they come. Say one day the world will now collapse. Everything will now, water will flood. You know, go happen. Because God says I will not do that anymore. So I don't care how many movies they have made of the end of the world. Have you watched some movie where they say the world now ended, everything now ended? There was no more. It will never happen. God says I will not. So you only have people with wrong imagination. Everybody say imagination of evil. Imagination. Say it one more time. Ask your neighbor, are you imagining evil? What is evil? Thinking like a cursed person when you are blessed. Anytime you think and talk like a cursed person, you are imagining evil and that is an abuse of your mind. Listen to this. Let me make it more interesting. If you are speaking and talking or thinking from where you are, you are imagining evil. Any mentality, any mindset outside of Christ is an imagination of evil. Now, let me show you another scripture. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, everybody. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Let me build this up. Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Are we there? Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now go to verse 16. Ecclesiastes 10 from verse 16. Are we there? Now watch this. We saw when God initially said, curses the ground for your sake. Then in Genesis 8, God says, I will not curse the ground anymore. Say the ground is not cursed. Say but that cut is not cursed. All the devil needs is for you to say it and to think it. Because you are the one with the power. He cannot do anything until he deceives you to curse yourself. You look at your finance and what you have is not what you need and it's not what you want. Instead of you to speak from where you are, why not speak from what you believe? Why do you say, now wow, 
Man, not even know where person go. You just paid your rent two months ago, and you have another eight months, or I'm sorry, ten months for the next rent. It has not even expired. You're already thinking of how they will throw you out of the house. That's a cost way of thinking. Why do you keep imagining evil happen to you? It's because you are deceived. It's when men are deceived, they think evil. Write it down. When men are what? That they think evil. Eve did not commit evil until she was beguiled or deceived. Whenever you find that you are imagining wrong things, it's because there's a deception walking somewhere. The devil has lied to you about the situation. So you have, you have bought his lie. Instead of aligning the way you think about the situation to agree with where you are in God, you are thinking from where you are. Go. Cool. Are we ready? Let's read it. What did he say? Woe to thee, O land. The word woe means cost. You know, go better for you. <laughs> That's what woe means. Anytime you say woe, it's a sound that is not good. Woe to thee, O land. What, what is the scripture? What is a land? A land is where people live, operate, function, do business, and conduct their lives. Is that not so? Huh? Is it not so? The land of Port Harcourt, the land of Rumodara, on which we live. People live in a land. Is that not so? So the land is the atmosphere, the environment in which people live and do business. Is that not what a land is? Now, the Bible is making a very powerful truth. It says, woe to a land. Watch this. Not because the land is cursed. Read the next thing, everybody. Woe to a land when? Read it, everybody. Read it. Who is the king? When the king is what? Now, the Bible says God has made you a king. Is that not so? Paul said in Galatians 4, he said, when a son is a child, he's kept under control until he matures. Is that not so? Yeah. Now, Bible says God has made you a king. Is that not so? And a priest. Now, where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. So, that means the state of the land is determined by the state of the king. If the Bible says woe to the land, it's because the king is not thinking like a king. The king is thinking like what? A child. And what is the characteristic of childish thinking? Everybody say irresponsibility. Yeah, that's, the child is immature, so they are irresponsible. They are foolish not because they are evil, they are foolish because they are immature. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the only way to help a child is to use a rod. A rod is called correction. And for a child, there are two kinds of correction, physically speaking. There's the rod of words, and there's the rod of bulala. Everybody say bulala. I hope you know there were flogging people in the Bible. You didn't know. They were flogging you. Then Africa now gave amplified version. Conk, boah, slap, boah. Yeah, yeah. In, you know, in, in Africa, we do amplified version. Yeah, so clap, slap, conk, kick, blow, everything. That's amplified version. The original version is flog. If you don't discipline a child and flog a child, that child will grow rationalizing that his bad behavior is okay and that there is no consequence to that. I don't know about you. My father, if head the boss, my head for the boss. If neck they turn, my face for don't turn because I can't count how many slaps they give me. There is no matter how good you are, you must collect some. <laughs> is there anybody here that was not slapped? So if, if to slap somebody is to be abused, that means we are all abused. That's what it means. So the conk slap a day is plenty. It's part of the wisdom we have. Hmm? Yeah, I've given some slap to my children before, you know. So they know. They know very well. All right? But, but, but what the Bible is teaching that the state of the land responds to the state of the king. You are in this land and you are a king in Christ. So the state of the land of Port Harcourt will respond to the way you think and the way you speak. If you think and speak like a child, woe to the land. 
It's not because dollar and pound sterling is going, you know, the exchange rate is high. It's because the king is thinking and speaking like a child. Instead of speaking power, he's talking gaga, gaga, gaga. He's talking nonsense. Speaking nonsense. Ask your neighbor, are you talking nonsense? Are you speaking nonsense? Yeah. Yeah. It says, and the princes, which are the product of the king, they eat in the morning. So that, that's irresponsible. And listen, listen to this. The only way you can think and speak like a child is if you are not beholding the word. Are you hearing me? Is when the word is not in your mind and the word is not in your mind. That's why the first principle for entering rest is to meditate the word. What is meditation? Get the word inside. Get it into. Meditation helps us to get the word into our mind and into our into our are you paying attention? Into our mind and what? Into our mind and what? Say with me. Say meditation helps me get the word of God into my mind and into my mouth. That's why Joshua 1 it says, it says the book of the Lord shall not depart from where? Your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night so you may observe to do all that is written in it. He said then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. So if your land is not prosperous and it's not having good success, it's not because the land is cursed. It's because you, who is the king in the land, is thinking and speaking like a child. Hear me? When you are talking and thinking from where you are, what your senses are showing you, you are thinking and talking like a child. A child always speaks condition. That's why Satan is doing it. The only way Satan can reach you is the senses. And you are not a body. You live inside a body. Think right. No matter how much pressure Satan puts on your finances, refuse to say what is going on. Consider not your body. Refuse to be weak in faith. Be strong in faith, giving glory to God. I don't care what this account is saying. It is well with my finances. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. If you need to travel, the ticket money will come. That's how you talk. That's how you think. If I need to go, let, let me ask you a question. As high to, to fly to America now, to and fro is almost two million. Does that mean people are not going to America? Answer me now. Why must you think like the ones that cannot travel? If I get two million, I know I've got America. That's why you will not go. Can you get two million? Two million people will take by land. Go and buy land now. You want to go to UK about the same amount. Pound sterling ahead now is about 2,000 to 2,005. But when you hear, what do you think and what do you say? You will say, if I have to go to London, I will buy tickets. You are not saying it on your strength. If it's on your strength, then you should fear. But you are saying it on the God who said in his word, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. When Satan is trying to put the pressure on your mind, ah, this thing is very expensive. Ha, you don't go fear for that. Open your mouth and say, my God will supply all my needs according to his, I will buy, you say, Satan, Satan listen to I go buy him. <laughs> Yesterday I went for a walk, six kilometer walk. As I was praying in the spirit, at about 7 20 or 22 or 32 a.m., as I was just praying, I was walking, praying in the spirit. I was praying about something anyway. Praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. Then, boom, it just dawned on me. I heard myself say, In the name of Jesus, I receive and I thank God for a second camera in church in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm going to get a second camera. Don't believe, I didn't ask you for money. I said, we'll get it. Then as I was going, 
Then I said, in the name of Jesus, I believe and receive a 14-seater coaster bus for mission in Jesus' name. I receive it. The only reason you should be afraid is if you are the one that will do it. It's not you. Ooh, not be you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not you. It's the God we serve. And when you begin to think like that, God can just empower you and bless you beyond your imagination. Say, buy the car. That's how you should be thinking. When they say, say, I'll take it, I'll take care of you. You are not boasting on your strength. You are not boasting on your job. You are boasting on your ability, your confidence in God. Hallelujah. Go to the next verse. Let's begin to round up. Watch this. Look at the two differences. There's a dichotomy here. One, woe to your land. Is that not so? When your kings are like children. But look at this. Can we read it together? I want to go. Read it louder. When thy Do you see the difference? There's a difference between a child and a son. Is that not so? Let me show you the difference. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Then I'll stop. There's a difference between a son and a child. When you think like a son, I will show you. Go to Galatians chapter 4, everybody. Galatians chapter 4. Hallelujah. From verse 1. Are we there? Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Are you there? Now, what did the Bible say? And I say that the hair, who is the hair? A hair is somebody that is entitled to an inheritance. Uh, you know, you know that, that's what a hair is. If, if you are entitled to an inheritance, what are you called? A hair. And guess what? The day you got born again, you became entitled to God's inheritance. So he calls you a hair of God. Say, I am a hair of God. Yes. Say it with authority. Yes. That means the day you got born again, you became entitled to the inheritance of who? Of God. Of Christ. So everything God has belongs to you. Everything God has to offer belongs to you. So you are a heir of God. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. May you get that in Jesus' name. Amen. But guess what he says? For you to enjoy your inheritance as a heir, you must stop thinking like a child. Watch this. He says that the heir, as long as he is a child, have you seen any father that has great wealth and the child is 12 years old? And he now said, from now on, I will all my billions to you as 12 years. Will you see anybody do that? Why will he not do that? Because he's a child. And as a child, he lacks the responsibility to manage it. At that stage, he can be manipulated. I hope you know that. Do you know one thing about children? They can be manipulated. Is that not true? Yeah, they can. That's why when you think like a child, your situation manipulates you. When you think like a child, your circumstance manipulates you. Manipulates you to talk like where you are. Manipulates you to think like where you are. Because you're thinking like a child. And when you're thinking like a child, you can be influenced by what is going on in the sense realm. You can be influenced by what you hear on the news. You can be influenced by the condition that is facing you. So, if you're going to walk in your inheritance, you should stop thinking like a child and start thinking like a son. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? To start thinking, and write this down, to think like a son is to think from your position in Christ and to talk from your position in Christ. What did I say? To think like a son is to, I mean, to operate like a son is to think from your position in Christ and to speak from your position in Christ. So you don't say where you are, you say who you are. 
A son does not say where he is. He says who he is. A child speaks from where he or she is. And I refuse to be manipulated by situation. When you think like a child, somebody's testimony can threaten, intimidate, or make you feel inferior. When you think like a child, when you hear something happen in somebody's life, you become afraid, or you become intimidated, or you become shy, or you become, you feel you know, low self-esteem. Ah, God, why, why, why them and not me? When a Christian behaves like that, he's thinking like what? A child. When a believer blames situation and circumstance, what is he doing? He's thinking like a child. As long as a hair is a child, in thinking and speaking, he differs nothing from what? A servant. Though he be Lord of all. So once you think like a child, you will operate like a servant. Did you hear what I said? When you think like a child, what will happen? You will, op you will, op you will serve the situation. You will serve the circumstance. Go to the next verse. Watch this. But it's on that tutor. So what the father will do, he will put you on that tutelage and governors until the time appointed where you have matured into sonship. When the way you think shifts from where you are to who you are. Tell your neighbor, say, let there be a shift in my mentality. From where I am to who I am in Christ. Why? Because if any man be in Christ, he is what? He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The only reason the situation is wounding you is because you are thinking so and you are talking so. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Has somebody been blessed this morning? Now open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Make some repentance this morning. Say, Holy Spirit, forgive me for thinking according to where I am. Forgive me for speaking from where I am. Open your mouth and begin to say so. In Jesus' name. Lift your right hand up. Say with me, say, in the name of Jesus. I call my land blessed. I call my finances blessed. I call my home blessed. I call my business blessed. I call my life blessed. Because I am a son of God. I think like a son. I allow what I think to come from who I am in Christ. I am more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have the spirit of power, love and a sound mind. I'm more than a conqueror. God is causing me always to triumph in Christ and is manifesting the perfume of his victory through my life everywhere I go. I think like a son. I speak like a son. I refuse to speak from where I am. And I speak from who I am. For as he is, so am I in this present world. I declare peace over my life. I declare peace over the refuge house. I declare peace over everything that concerns me. Peace in my going. Peace in my coming back. I am protected and preserved from all evil. I am protected in my going. I am protected in my coming. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against me, in judgment I condemn it. I will not fear because God is with me. I will not be confused because the Lord is my God. The Lord strengthens me. The Lord helps me. The Lord sustains me. I'm blessed. Amen. Lift your offering and just talk to God. Glory be to God. Come on, just worship him.